sont d'accord. J'ai le plaisir de présider ce jury du HDR. Donc, je suis Catherine Polachot de, de l'USIR, donc de Sorbonne Université. Et euh, c'est Laure Soulier qui va nous présenter ses travaux en uh, New Language Models for Pest Related to Text Generation and Track the Conversational Search. So we'll have a discussion. So you have 45 minutes. And after we go, for the, maybe I should introduce the jury members so we can wait for the um, minister. Uh, so we have, as a reviewer, we have Professor Evangelos Canulas from University of Amsterdam. Then we have Marie Francine Moss from Leuven University. And um, Eric Gossier from the University of Navarre. On Zoom, we have Laurent Bezassier from also Professor of the University of uh, Navarre, and myself. And Fabio Christian. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll thought well. And uh, Fabio Cristani from the University of uh, Svizzera Italiana. So you have 45 minutes. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Laure Soulier, and I am associate professor in the Amelia team at Sorbonne University. And today I'm going to present my research work dealing with rural language models with faithful data to text generation and proactive conversational search. First of all, I would like to thank the committee member for accepting my invitation to attend this defense. And also thanks everyone for uh, attending the defense. Oops. Oh. Sorry, let's start good. <laughs> okay. Yes. Here you have an overview of my research interest uh, since 2015 when I, when I was hired at Sorbonne University. My research activity mainly focus on information retrieval and natural language processing. I have started my investigation in the team with, by conceptualizing two theses dealing with language grounding. Then since 2017, I, uh, I am working on data to text generation with different theses and the national research project. And recently I have also started working on the reverse side dealing with name entity recognition. I am also the PI of a national research project dealing with conversational search, in which I supervise or co-supervise different theses and postdoctoral researcher. And recently, I have started to work on domain adaptation for reinforcement learning environments. The common point between all this research is I am always interested in designing theoretical models for machine learning and particular deep learning, uh, and also aiming at improving or leveraging neural language models. So let's start with the evolution of uh, language models. Language modeling has been introduced in information retrieval in 1998 eh, with statistical uh, co-occurrence analysis. And the real pioneering work of language model as we know them today has been proposed in 2003 by Benjo and Hal. The objective of this model is to build a latent space in which we project the, the rewards we, uh, through continuous vectors. And those vectors are estimated by uh, maximizing the probability of the world given the previous one. The uh, real effectiveness of language model has been also demonstrated in the Imagine, ImageNet challenge. And this has gained uh, in the language model has gained in attraction in the research community with that, with this. And there are different improvement or models that have been designed. Uh, by improving uh, the, uh, con the context, the text unique, and also the model architecture. Those improvements have also uh, gained attraction in the industrial community with, for instance, the impressive result of the Google Translate. In 2017, Transformer have been introduced by Vazgun and Hal. They rely on self-attention and multi-heads, and they have shown very good uh, results in, in, in first-hand on machine transla translation tasks, but also uh, they have shown also good generalization properties. The size of the language models of the architecture and in terms of data set has, has increased with 
the different improvements. And um, this allows to capture both fine grain and global match matching signals, uh, allowing the model to resolve value tasks ranging from the easiest one uh, dealing with language modeling to the more com complex one dealing with dialogue, com completion, and common sense reasoning. Those models allow us also to provide some instructions that we call prompts, and several works have shown that it is possible to fine-tune the prompt or the prefix without fine-tuning the whole language models. And one recent, one recent model that has been proposed is ChatGPT that is not necessary uh, to present, I think. In this presentation, we made the assumption that language models are able to capture both words and sentence semantics and that they are able to uh, generate fluent text. And I will present some uh, improvements we have tackled uh, this last year uh, in terms of language modeling. The first research question I will address is uh, the way to generate faithful and relevant text. The second one aims at contextualizing language models in dialogue settings, particularly in order to provide naturalistic and proactive interactions. And in the second one, we are, uh, we are interested in the ability of language models to uh, continual, continu continually adapt in the real ranking task. For those three research questions, uh, I have considered three different research fields de dealing with data to text generation, conversational search, and continual learning. So before going deeper into those research questions, I would like to present the different research fields. The first one is data to text generation. The objective is to generate textual description according to structured data, which might be uh, tables, figures, or graphs, graphs for instance. Um, and the intuition behind those models is that structured data might be so big and so high that they are not easily understandable by, by humans, and therefore we hope that textual description might ease the information access. You have here an example of info box uh, on a wiki, Wikipedia, which, uh, which relates some metadata about a research paper. And what we hope for data to text generation model is to generate the associated description here. It is done by leveraging standard techniques from natural language generation, such as uh, training the model with a cross entropy loss and generating the description at inference ste steps with greedy decoding or beam search, for instance. Whoops. I would like to highlight that data to text generation is different than language, natural language generation, since it requires to select the contents we would like to discuss order those information and do some paraphrasing. Also, the faithfulness in data to text generation is critical since we need to follow the input constraints. And encoding the structured data is also critical since we have the structure, which can be complex. And also, uh, we, we may do some uh, inference of data abstraction uh, to encode the, the, the input. The second research field is conversational search, which aim at replacing or augmenting search engine with natural language interactions and leveraging those interactions. Uh, we provide also some issues such as uh, ranking documents according to the conversation context or also generating uh, natural language answers. Um, and conversational search is particularly useful for, for complex and exploratory information needs uh, in which the user might have some difficulties to express his, his information needs. And therefore, we hope that the conversational search system support, support uh, the elicitation of the information need, for instance, with query clarify, clarifying question, as shown here in the figure. And third, evaluating such system is complex since we don't have any uh, product system in production and therefore this is really uh, difficult to collect some data. And also we need to revisit the evaluation metric to measure jointly the search effectiveness, the dialogue, dialogue utility and its natural limits. And the third research fields focus on continual learning, which aim at training neural networks uh, consecutively on a sequence of tasks as shown here in the figures. This is a field that, that has been largely studied in uh, computer vision for classification tasks, in which new, new classes uh, are considered as new, new, new tasks. And this setting gives reason to two main challenges. The first one is cause, called plasticity, which aim at answering the transferability of neural networks. And we know that neural networks accumulate the knowledge throughout the stream, and therefore this uh, phenomenon might erase 
the knowledge learned in previous streams, and therefore they give the rise to the second research challenges called stability, which aim at avoiding the catastrophic forgetting phenomenon. So let's have a look on the first research question dealing with the generation of faithful and relevant texts. Uh, first, I would like to start by defining what faithfulness issues means. Uh, it has been defined by Lee and Tal in 2020 by uh, the fact that faithfulness issues occurs when uh, the generated content is inconsistent regarding the input, has hallucination or non-factual information. They have uh, presented here a sequence of tasks in which in red they have highlighted some unfaithfulness issue in the output uh, in the generated output. The question is why does it occur? We have several reasons, I will discuss some of them. And the first one uh, deals with the imperfect encoding of the input data. In data to text generation, we have some uh, complex structure and it might be also difficult to encode this. Oops. Um, so you have here an example of a table that, uh, and uh, it's a relate, uh, related encoding proposed by the literature. The literature uh, generally uh, encodes the, the table as a linearization in which we concatenate the different elements into a single line. And you can see here that we lose the delimitation between the line and we also lose the structure of the table. To tackle this limitation, we have proposed a hierarchical encoder uh, for data to text generation in order to take into account the uh, structure. This hierarchical encoder aims at first encoding the line within the tables using the low level encoders, and then to encode the table according to the line representation with a high level encoder. At the decoding, the decoding is guided by a hierarchical annotation in which we choose first the line we would like to discuss and then the element we would like to discuss according to the selected line. We were also the first to, uh, to, to integrate the transformer architecture in data to text generation. Our objective was to allow a comparison between the elements within the line. And also we have deactivated the positional encoding because we think that the order of the row name and the, the, or the order of the row and the columns are not really pre prevalent in the table. The experiments uh, regarding this model have shown that our hierarchical encoder is more effective than uh, linearizing the input uh, at the decoder level. When uh, we have compared with a model that integrates the structure at the decoder level, we have also uh, seen that it is better to integrate the structure at the early stage of the network, namely in the encoder. And also we have analyzed the hierarchical attention and we have shown that it is sufficient to focus only on the column names once we have selected the lines. We can only select the column names uh, rather than uh, focusing on the column names plus uh, the value uh, within the cell. However, when we had uh, a look into the generated uh, description, we have seen there are still remaining errors. You have here an example of a table that uh, includes stat statistics about uh, basketball players and basketball teams for single basketball games. Um, and in the generated description in purple, we have seen that, that there are some sentences uh, dealing with discussion, uh, dealing with uh, different basketball games or prediction about future bas basketball games. And particularly those sentences are not grounded into the table and this is not required in data to text generation. And this leads me to introduce the second explanation of unfaithfulness in data to text generation. This is a case when we don't have a line data set between the input and the output for training models. We have some differ divergences that might lead to, uh, to hallucination uh, during the generation step. This is particularly due to the standard training procedure on the, of neural models that mimic the behaviors that we have in the training data. And to tackle this limitation, we have proposed to uh, score hallucination at the world level and to integrate those scores within a multi-branch decoder. 
So first, we have proposed to estimate for each word an hallucination scores. And the intuition behind this course is that we can have in the training data some part of the test text that might be divergent and other parts that, that might be faithful. And therefore, we estimate at the world level. To estimate these scores, we have two main challenges. The first one concerns the vocabulary discrepancy between the input and the output data. And to tackle this challenge, we used co-occurrence analysis. And also, we have made an assumption that we would like that word within the same statement or the same part of the sentence should have the same hallucination scores. And to, tackle, to, to guarantee this, this assumption, we use on the top of, of the co-occurrence analysis part of speech tagging and dependency parsing. The evaluation we have done uh, according to these annotations so, so that uh, our method is able to provide final growing identification of hallucination scores. You have here an example of a baseline uh, which aim at only classifying words whether they are hallucinated or not. And we can see that they annotate all the words in the sentence as hallucinated, which is not true. Um, our model is, to is able to provide only to identify only a part of the sentence as hallucinated. Once we have this, these annotations, one way can be to clean the data set according to this course and then to train the models. But our experiments have shown that it is not sufficient. And therefore, we have proposed our multi branch decoder. Our multi branch decoder aims at uh, generating uh, words according to the input and to consider three main control factors. The first one is the content, the second one, the fluency, and the third one, the hallucination uh, factor. And the third one is related to our hallucination scores. The probability of the next word is, uh, is estimated according to the different representation provided by each decoder related to each output, to each control factor. And then uh, they, uh, this is done by doing a combination of those representation. At the inference step, a user can then control the weight of those different branch and then control the level of uh, the hallucination factor. The experiments we have done uh, using our multi-branch decoder show that it allows to reduce the hallucination rate to 1% regarding to the 23% of hallucination rate we have in the training data set. Um, also, when we compare our model with a model trained on a clean version of the data set, we have so seen that uh, the baseline provides incomplete sentence and very short sentences. And also we have analyzed the weight, the, the impact of the different factors here. And we have seen that they are codependent. We always need the fluency factor, but lowering the hallucination factor to zero might hinder us in some way uh, the verbosity of the sentence. And that's why we always keep a small factor, a small weight for this factor. The third uh, reason that might explain the, pain, the unfaithfulness in the text generation is what we know, what we call parametric knowledge bias. Um, this um, this uh, assumption uh, is based on the fact that language model we have in language model we have parameters that capture the different knowledge seen in the training data set, and that the trend is that always the language model has the ability to uh, rather focus on the knowledge on the parameter rather than considering the input constraint. And to have an overview of this phenomenon, we have considered here another task. We have considered conversational search and with the objective to generate natural language uh, answers given uh, um, a complex information needs. And therefore here, the inputs of the documents and the output is a generated answer. To uh, tackle this limitation, we use content planning strategies for uh, generating the natural language answers. So how is the task? Actually, when we seek information on the web search engine, the web search engine often retrieves several pages that cover different aspects of the queries. And what will be desired is there to have a response in natural language that gather all uh, the relevant pieces of information, uh, including in those web pages. 
What we expect here is to generate a natural language answer with a kind of structure uh, related to the different aspects we, uh, we have in the different web pages. And to do this, we can use standard text-to-text -text approaches. But we hope here that uh, if we use content planning-based generation, we will integrate within the generation the structure prior modeling. And therefore, we will enhance the re relevance in the text generation. So how does planning-based strategy uh, works? Um, they rely on two encoders, decoders. The first encoder, encoder aim at generating the plan of the answer according to the query and the relevant documents. Then we have a second encoder, decoder that aims at generating the natural language answer according to the query, the plan, and the relevant documents. Each encoder, decoder is guided by a loss, which we combine to train the model in an end-to-end -end manner. When we have evaluated uh, this model, we have uh, highlighted that our model is able to provide longer response while also conveying all the semantics in the relevant web pages. And also we have tried to generate different type of answer. Uh, one answer which has the structure within uh, the answer with a, uh, um, a mix between the raw data and the plan as shown here in the figure, and unstructured answer in which we remove the plan and we have only the raw text elements. And we have highlighted that our approach based on planning is able to have good results while generating both type of answers. And therefore, we, we can uh, infer that uh, introducing the structure within the reasoning, within the decoding of the model, allow to uh, have a better, uh, a, a better relevance in the text generation, whether we expect a structure or not within the answer. To end this first research question, I would like to highlight three main lessons we have learned from our different experiments. The first one concerns the structure of the data. We have, we have highlighted that it is necessary to consider the structure of data while encoding the different data. This has also, also been uh, demonstrated in natural language generation. Um, beyond the structure, uh, we have also uh, highlighted that it is important to focus on what is relevant in the input data. Remember our hierarchical attention, uh, which highlights that we only need to focus on the column name rather than the raw information. And finally, we have highlighted that planning strategy are optimizing <coughs> since they allow to introduce the structure and also to ensure the relevance in the text generation. And I would like also to link planning strategies with explain explainability since it's also, also for the model to provide a way to uh, support how it reason and how it uh, generates the output. Regarding the second research question, the focus uh, is to analyze how we can contextualize neural language models. And for this, uh, I will particularly focus on conversational search. Um, for conversational search, we can have two main components. The first one is dialogue system and the second one, information ritual systems. In dialogue system, the objective is rather focused on discussing with the user or solving closed tasks in closed domains, such, such as travel planning. Uh, while in information retrieval, the objective is to identify relevant documents according to an information need in large database, maybe in open domain. But we have limited interactions such as queries and click. The objective of conversational search system is to bridge the gap between those two systems and therefore to allow the user to interact with both systems. Um, the different relevant information identified by the information retrieval system might be directly displayed to the user, but also summarized in natural language uh, to have a more naturalistic interactions. There are different ways to support information access in conversational search. The first one follows the information retrieval paradigm and rather focus on the objective of ranking documents according to the conversation context. This is a task uh, mainly tackled by the trackcast challenge. You have here an example of conversation, and at which at each uh, line we have the objective to run documents. 
When we had a look on the literature review, we see we have seen that there are two main strategies. Most of the work use query reformulation techniques to have to reformulate the queries. And once we have these reformulated queries, it is given as input of, the, of a standard retrieval model to identify the relevant documents. A few work have considered consider directly ranking documents according to the conversation context. And this is a difficult task because in the TrekCast uh, data set, we don't have the document relevance in the training set. And therefore, the model use zero-shot strategies or, uh, or pseudo-relevance uh, in terms of document to, to have uh, pseudo-relevant documents. In our contribution, we propose to leverage sparse ranking models uh, to, uh, and to train them in a lightweight training for designing such conversational document ranking models. Sparse ranking models have shown good generalization properties and relies on the fact that they estimate sparse representation for queries and documents. One of these models has been developed in the team and is called SPLAID, and we have integrated the SPLAID model within a document ranking pipeline, a standard document ranking pipeline, particularly as a first stage ranking model. And the objective was to contextualize this model according to the conversation system, uh, to the conversation context. The originality of our approach rely on the way uh, we train this model. We did not make use of any document relevant passages and uh, document relevance, and um, rather focus on the queries representation. Our objective was to bring closer to the representation of the document of the queries learned by the splayed model, the contextualized splayed model, according to the representation of the goal queries in the training data set. And then once we have trained this model, we obtain sparse vectors for queries and documents, and we can identify the top terms according to the conversation context and provide the context to the second stage ranking model. We have evaluated this model using various experiments and we have highlighted the benefit of our lightweight training approach. We have also obtained results on par with the best participants of the challenge. The second way to support information access is to rely on the naturalness of interaction and also to help the uh, user to support his information need and to elicit, elicit, elicit his information need. Uh, this is done, for instance, with query clarification. Most of the world in, in this task rely on text-to-text -text generation, but they are limited in the fact that they rely on a single term interaction and then the retrieval effectiveness if the, is done after the first uh, interaction term. We have proposed in our approach uh, to a fully simulated framework that allow multi-term interactions to support, um, to, to clarify, uh, allowing to clarify a question. Uh, this simulation framework relies on the user, uh, agent, and the conversational information retrieval systems. Once the conversational information retrieval system receives a query from the user, I hope it works, yes. The objective of the conversational system is to generate a set of clarifying questions. Uh, for doing this, we use the T5 model and added on the top of the T5 model a diversity beam to ensure the diversity uh, within the generation set. And then he has the objective to select two clarifying questions within this set. And those two clarifying questions are presented to the user and we hope the user will be ready and therefore select the queries that better matches with his intent and then provide a first interaction feedback. And then according to this interaction, we can refine the information need and therefore select two new clarifying queries and display those two new clarifying questions to provide new feedbacks. Okay. <laughs> Uh, to provide new feedbacks. And then we can repeat these different steps several times and at the end, uh, perform a retrieval uh, task according to the different interaction. And the question, the, the challenge in this framework is to select those two clarifying questions um, according to the generated set. And in this generated set, the question is how to run the queries to select one the top uh, two queries to display to the user. 
If we had a look on the generated set, on the clarifying question set generated by the language model, uh, we have plotted in blue the associated curve. What we have done is to consider the, wrong, the, the generated set and we have estimated the MRR metric according to different rocks. And this is a curve in B. We have ordered also the queries according to higher uh, effectiveness metrics and have done the same by, by uh, estimating the MRR metric according to the different rank. And we obtain the oracle curve in green. And we see here that we have a gap between the order provided by the language model and the optimal order we can have according to different uh, re uh, information retrieval metrics. What we have done is to uh, train a simple model uh, ranking queries according to their performance. And this is a curve in a range. And we can see that we correct the bias between the language model and the higher performance, which are desired. And what we hope is that when we leverage the user feedback, we can correct more and more the, this bias to have a better ranks of queries. So therefore, we have proposed different selection strategies uh, within this set, uh, ranging from random selection to query refinement techniques, including clustering of, of queries and also uh, ranking according to the user feedback. When we have evaluated our approach, what we have done is to estimate the uh, retrieval performance according to different interaction terms. We have highlighted that the effect that the, the interaction allowed to improve the effectiveness within the search. We have also obtained a saturation in terms of effectiveness metrics after five or six uh, interaction terms, highlighting that we are able to support the information needs without too much overloading. And our query refinement strategy shows also the best, the, the most promising uh, results. Um, to conclude this second research question, I would like here also to discuss uh, three main statements uh, from the contributions. Uh, first, we have um, highlighted that, that sparse retrieval models uh, can have good general transfer or good generalization properties. Uh, when we have no ground truth uh, for training this, this model. And I think this is particularly interesting uh, because when we de design novel IR tasks, uh, we, we all know that it is difficult to build a large scale data set with uh, document relevance uh, evidences. And therefore, it might be a first strategy uh, to avoid uh, building such data set and also. Uh, training uh, ranking model in a lightweight uh, in a lightweight approach uh, without having a document relevance. We have also highlighted that neural language models are not always correlated with higher peculiarities, highlighting the need to uh, design higher specific features or higher specific losses on the top of a language model. Uh, my objective, obviously, is not to uh, lower the powerfulness of language model. We all know uh, that they are necessary uh, as a preliminary mm -hmm. of neural ranking models. And also, I believe that uh, they are very useful to improve the naturalness of information retrieval, particularly in conversational search. And the third point, which might be somehow polemic, uh, questions the future of information retrieval according to the fast evolution of language models. We have seen this last month with the chat GPT, web GPT, that we have language model able to provide answers and also to provide evidence sources for web GPT. And one question is, is it done with the search engines? Um, I just would like to mention a paper provided by Shah and Bender, uh, we highlight, who, who highlight that seeking information is not simply uh, in, is not simply obtaining a correct answer with evidence sources in uh, the case of WebGBT, but it is more a process in which we need user engagement uh, with uh, interaction and also sense making information like organization process to have a real effectiveness uh, search session. And therefore, I believe that we also need to design IR oriented feature in conversational system has done through clarifying question, which is actually a new uh, feature in search engine, and also to design proper evaluations according to those new features. The second research question focuses on the ability of language model to continually adapt in neural ranking tasks. Um, 
I have defined earlier what is continual learning, but I would like here to highlight what is different between what, is, what has been done in the literature with classification tasks regarding to what can be done in information retrieval. What is different in information retrieval is that the loss objective is a ranking loss in which we aim at comparing different elements or at least providing the rank list of documents. And therefore, what is willing to evolve is the queries and the documents, and therefore impacting the query topic and the document topic distributions. And this rather concerns the input of the model instead of the output of the model as in classification task. In classification task, the output is a label uh, gene, uh, predicted by the model. In information retrieval, the output is always the same. Uh, the output is a score for a query and the document within the ranking perspective. So I will start by defining continual learning framework for information retrieval. And you will see this is quite similar as in classification tasks. We have a set, uh, a stream of tasks, which are uh, generally a different tuple of queries and documents. And the objective is to train the model consecutively, oops, excuse me, consecutively on those tasks. And therefore, we obtain a model AI, with, uh, a model MI with parameter theta i at each step. And then at each step, we can estimate the retrieval performance of the model according to the test set. What is interesting in continual learning is to identify whether the model is able to accumulate and forget the knowledge according to the stream. And therefore, we have two metrics the backward transfer, which estimates the ability of the model to uh, forget knowledge when it is trained on new tasks, and also the forward transfer, which estimates the uh, knowledge which is, which is accumulated throughout the, the stream with the new tasks. What is difficult in this setting is to build the stream of tasks. So we have proposed different ways to uh, model the stream of tasks. We have considered short stream with evolving domain and in which we consider new data set at, at, at new task. We have also considered long stream up to 74 tasks in which we fix the document collection and make the query topic evolving through, throughout the, the stream. And therefore, we and also we have proposed different control scenario uh, dealing with information update or language drift. Uh, in what follow, I will present the two first uh, stream, short and long, and present uh, the most salient results. For the short stream, we have uh, compared different neural ranking models, uh, ranging from deep relevance matching model to bare based model on the different stream, streams built on a new uh, the data set uh, of, uh, with two or three data sets in the stream. And we have fine-tuned the model according to uh, this stream. We have estimated the REM metric, which is a metric uh, measuring the catastrophic forgetting phenomenon. One means that there is no catastrophic forgetting. And we have seen that catastrophic forgetting in information retrieval is not as clear as in computer vision. However, we have highlighted that verb based model are able to bring effectiveness gain compared to the one provided by exact based matching model, such as BM25. But having this effectiveness gain does not avoid catastrophic forgetting. Although we obtain small catastrophic forgetting metrics, we have also um, used a lifelong learning strategy, which is called EWC. And we have uh, highlighted that it is possible to reduce uh, even more the catastrophic forgetting phenomenon. Regarding the setting of long streams, we had to build the stream of data set. And for doing this, we, we relied on the MS Marco data set in which we have clustered the queries. So the document collection is fixed and we have cluster of queries. And therefore, we uh, had the possibility to build different streams of successive clusters. We have three data sets in the end, ranging from 19 to 74 uh, topics. And we have evaluated those data sets according to data set build using random clusters. What the results have highlighted is that catastrophic forgetting is more noticeable on long streams, which is somehow obvious according to the length of the stream. 
Uh, also, we have highlighted uh, similarly to uh, short uh, in the short stream uh, setting that ranking model behave differently in terms of catastrophic forgetting. And also we have analyzed the catastrophic forgetting issue regarding to the task similarity according to successive uh, tasks. And we have highlighted that the more topics are similar, the less neural ranking models forget. As a conclusion of this section, I would like just to highlight three main points. The first one is that in neural ranking models, uh, we don't have uh, a good, uh, uh, an important catastrophic forgetting, a forgetting uh, phenomenon, and therefore that neural ranking model are regarding to classification models uh, generally good properties. I think this is particularly due to the nature of neural ranking models since they are designed to identify relevant matching signal uh, beforehand semantic matching signal. And this is different as in classification tasks in which we would like, for instance, detect the label of the object in which the semantics of the label is more prevalent. Uh, we have also highlighted that the model architecture matters uh, regarding our uh, results regarding the, the bare based model. Uh, also, what is different between bell based models with, for instance, deep relevance matching models is that they are more, the features of the model are more semant semantically oriented and correlated to my previous statement. Uh, we can have maybe the same conclusion in terms of catastrophic forgetting phenomenon. And also, um, in our control setting, I haven't seen, uh, I haven't shown here the results, but we have seen that the type also of the data uh, matters. Uh, for instance, when we uh, switch the query topic, we can see that there are more catastrophic forgetting, maybe uh, due to the small expressiveness of queries regarding to the length of queries instead of, instead of uh, longer documents, for instance. As a conclusion of this presentation, I would like to discuss different perspectives related to the different research questions, but also more long-term uh, perspective. Um, for the first research question, Dealing with the faithfulness and the relevance of text generation, we have highlighted different techniques at different levels of the neural, uh, neural, neural architecture, uh, allowing to reduce uh, faithfulness issues. But I think that uh, introducing numerical reasoning in language models is also critical for particularly for data to text generation, in which we have in, we, we we might have in, as input uh, different uh, figures and different numbers. And therefore, this is really critical when we have analyzed our generated description uh, that there are still errors at this level. Uh, I also believe that personalizing the text generation is also a guarantee uh, to the relevance of the generation because we need to adapt the, the, the description to the user expertise or user knowledge. And uh, for, therefore, we also need to work on the transferability of models to have application in real life. <laughs> Regarding to the second research question dealing with the contextualization of language model in conversational search, uh, what we hope in the uh, next months or next years is to integrate in our simulated framework naturalistic integration, uh, naturalistic uh, interaction. And therefore, we hope that it will allow to <laughs> design evaluation data set for open domain conversational uh, search. And finally, in the third research question, dealing with the analysis of the catastrophic forgetting phenomenon, what we hope now is to design neural ranking models that can continually adapt, even if we have very small catastrophic forgetting phenomenon, but we have detected some simulation, so some situation in which it might be, it might be useful. As a long-term uh, perspective, uh, I would like to discuss two uh, main points. The first one is, by, is called virtual enhanced machine learning. Uh, I have worked a lot on information retrieval development during these last years and also in machine learnings. And I think this can be natural to ground machine, neural, neural, machine learning models with information retrieval system. This is a strategy also discussed by Zamani and Hal in a paper. And they have, uh, they have discussed that this uh, setting can allow to access and reason of a large, term, large text corpora and knowledge basis. Also, it, it will allow to reduce the number of parameters within machine learning models and improve the scalability of generalization 
of the model. I will also add, if it can allow also to introduce some explanation within uh, the decision taken by the machine learning models uh, through the different sample retrieved by the information retrieval systems. If we project this setting on data to text generation, uh, we can, it can allow to leverage external sources uh, for grounding the input. For instance, have a, a better understanding of the column name, sometimes which are, so, which are some critical uh, to understand, and also introduce domain knowledge to have a better, um, uh, a better grounding of the domain. Uh, for instance, for the continual learning setting, uh, the retrieval system might act uh, differently, uh, has a memory to store the previous sample in the stream, and also has a replay buffer to uh, allow an accumulation of the knowledge uh, throughout the stream. And finally, uh, with the uh, integration of the Amelia team in the robotic laboratory, we had a lot of discussions uh, in terms of collaboration. And one of them is to uh, focus on language, language of Mantic robotics. So what we have discussed, here we have a robot and a scene, and we would like the robot to evolve within the scene. If I ask the robot to cut a lemon, there are different works that, uh, that, breed, that combine transformer networks with reinforcement learning models. Uh, to generate the set of instructions that the robot should do to cut the lemons. So you have here an example. And so different, the model are trained on different samples uh, to uh, generate those instructions. And if at the training uh, an inference step, I ask the robot to cut the ball, guess what happened? The lemon is replaced by the ball. And therefore we all know that it is not possible to cut a ball with a knife. So what I propose to integrate in those models is to semantically ground those models uh, using common, uh, uh, common sense knowledge bases. And therefore, what, uh, what I hope is that we, if we know how a ball, a ball is built and how it can be cut, we know that it is not possible to cut the ball with a knife. And therefore, we can revisit the process of generating the set of instructions. Also, when there are uncertainty within the language model, we can allow the, the robot to interact with the environment and the humans. Uh, if we have to cut elements, uh, we don't know whether it is a slice or wedge we are expecting. And therefore, if uh, the robot interacts with the human, we can also update the natural language instruction generation with the element provided by the user. So this is uh, the end of my talk. You have here an overview of my different research activity. Thank you uh, for your attention. And it would be a pleasure to answer your different questions. Thank you uh, Lord, for uh, being on time and respecting the timing. So now we start with the second phase uh, with the questions. And I propose to start with uh, 